How to create a fire spark animation effect in DaVinci Resolve 18.1. Inside your project's edit window, go to effects. Underneath toolbox, select effects and go to add a fusion composition clip to your edit timeline. With this clip selected, hold in control or command if you're a Mac user and press D to alter the duration of your video clip if you wish. In this particular project, I will set the duration of this fusion composition clip to 10 seconds. Right click on your fusion composition clip and go to open in fusion page. We will first create the glowing sparks that float upwards from the bottom of our canvas. Inside your fusion nodes panel, go to select an ellipse tool. Select either the left or right view options underneath this tool to see a preview of your animation as you work. With this ellipse tool selected, go to inspector and underneath controls to add a gentle feather to the edges of your circle, increase soft edge slightly to 0.01, change the width to 0.05 and decrease height to 0.01. Go to add a P emitter node and with this new tool selected, under Inspector and Controls again, go to the Emitter Properties and decrease the number from 10 to 2 to avoid too many spark particles floating upwards in your animation. To add variance to the floating spark pattern so that different amounts of these particles emit at any instance, increase the value slightly for number variance to 0.01. .01. To ensure that the particles start fading out before they reach the top of the canvas, decrease lifespan to 25. And again for variation purposes so that each of the spark particles start fading out at moments different to one another, increase lifespan variance to 5. To generate particle movement, open up velocity below. Increase velocity itself to 0.15 to generate basic particle movement. And to have the particles move at various speeds, increase velocity variance slightly to 0.05. To ensure that the particles float upwards, Increment angle to 90. And to have particles pointing in slightly different directions so that their movement varies throughout the animation, I will increment angle variance to 10. Open up rotation. Change rotation mode from absolute rotation to rotation relative to motion so that the particles rotate depending on the direction that they flow. To ensure that the ellipse shapes can be used as the floating particle forms, scroll up in your inspector window. Go to Style and change Style from Point to Bitmap. Click on the grey box next to Ellipse 1 and connect this to the new yellow arrow which appears alongside P Emitter 1 to make a connection so that these ellipse shapes now become the particles. With P Emitter 1 still selected, return to Inspector, open up Colour Controls, double click on the white box underneath and select a vibrant red preset colour from the basic colors menu that appears inside your color window. The HTML code which applies to the shade is hash FF0000. Click OK. Open up color variants. To have each of the sparks deviate from the original red color shade slightly, decrement the value for low in the red variance section from 0 to minus 1 and increase the high value from 0 to 1. To have some of the particles incorporate a fire yellow colour, increment the value for green variance high to 0.4. Avoid setting this value too high to maintain traces of the original red shade that you set. Go down to size controls. To have the particles vary in size as they omit, which can also enhance a basic three-dimensional look of your animation, change size variance to 0.03. And in the size over life graph, Drag the node on the right side of the yellow line a quarter of the way down towards the bottom right corner so that your particles decrease in size as they get closer towards the top of your canvas. Double click on fade controls to have the particles fade out in the final 60% of their lifespans, decrease the value for out to 0.4. Scroll up in your inspector window, go to region, change region from sphere to line. We will use the start and end properties to set the source of our fire spark particles towards the bottom of our screen. Change start x offset to 0.35. Change start y offset to minus 0.28. Change end x offset to an inverted value of what you set start x offset. In this case here it will be minus 0.35. 
to create a straight line at the bottom of our canvas, set end Y offset to minus 0.28. The line on the preview window illustrates where the particles will emit from, between the two green arrow pointed nodes. With P emitter 1 still selected, hold in shift and press space, and go to add a P turbulence node, which we can use to vary the path that the particles flow on as they go from the bottom towards the top of the screen, creating a blowing wind illusion effect. With this new tool selected, go to Inspector. To have the position of the particles vary horizontally, increment X strength slightly to 0.35. And to strengthen the vertical flow of the particles, enabling some of them to do 180 rotations as they change direction whilst they're floating, increment Y strength to 1. And to create a basic illusion of the particles floating towards and away from the viewer, increment Z strength slightly to 0.5. With P-Turbulence still selected, go to add a P-Render tool, which can be used by DaVinci Resolve to process your final particle effect for the fire sparks. And to add a final glowing touch to your hot ash floating particles, hold and shift and press space, and go to add a glow tool, the one with GLO in parentheses. With this new tool selected, under Inspector and Controls, to reduce the spread of the glow from its original particle, decrease glow size to 0.7. And to add some more vibrancy to each of your spark particles, increment glow slightly to 0.9. Deselect your nodes by clicking anywhere on the empty nodes grid, hold in shift and press space, and go to add a merge tool. To ensure that your particles are not obstructed from the red glowing bottom section of your final animation video, we need to ensure that these floating fire spark particles appear in the foreground. Therefore, click on the grey box next to Glow 1 and drag your mouse cursor to the green arrow which appears alongside Merge 1 to make a connection. Connect the grey box of Merge 1 to the yellow arrow of Media Out 1, which will enable us to eventually preview our animation effect. Now to add the soft animated red glow that will appear towards the bottom of our canvas, similar to the tip of a bonfire effect. Deselect your nodes, go to select a new ellipse tool. With this new tool selected and set in preview mode, go to inspector and controls. To add basic transparency to this red glow, decrease the level value to 0.012. To add a gentle feather to the edge of the ellipse shape, increment soft edge to 0.3. Increment width and height to 0.55. Deselect your second ellipse tool. Go to select a new background tool from the nodes options and connect ellipse 2 to this new node. With background 1 selected, go to inspector and underneath color, double click on the black box underneath background and go to add one of the darker red preset options from the basic colors menu. The HTML code for this particular shade is hash AA0000. Click OK. Go to add a new P emitter tool. With this new tool selected, go to Inspector, select Style, change Style from Point to Bitmap, so that you can now click on the grey box alongside Background 1 and drag your mouse cursor to the yellow arrow alongside P emitter 2 to make a connection and set the new big red ellipse shapes that you just created as the new particles for this new emission effect. With P emitter 2 still selected, Return to Inspector, double click on Size Controls and double the value of size from 0.1 to 0.2. Go to drag the yellow node on the right in the Size Over Life graph a quarter of the way down to the bottom right corner as we did with our Fire Spark particles, so that the glowing red flame effect particles will reduce in size throughout their lifespan slightly. Open up Fade Controls, decrease Fade Out to 0.65 so that these big red glowing particles will fade out in the final 35% of their animation lifespan. Scroll up and go to Controls, change lifespan itself to 35, go to Velocity, to ensure that these big red particles with transparency remain at the bottom of the screen, I will select a slow velocity value of 0.035. And again for variation purposes, I'll increment velocity variance here to 0.08 so that some of the soft glowing particles go higher than others. To ensure that the particles point upwards, like with the fire spark particles themselves, 
change angle from 0 to 90. Go to region. To have the glowing particles emit from the bottom of the canvas, like what we did with the floating spark particles early on, we will set a low emission line just outside of the bottom of the video frame. We will spread these glowing particles out wider than the fire sparks themselves. Change region from sphere to line. Change start x offset to 0 0.4. Change start y offset to minus 0 0.38. So that these bigger red glowing particles will start emitting from a lower area than that of the fire sparks themselves. Apply the same value to end y offset and apply minus 0.4 to end x offset to ensure that the emission zone is spread across evenly on screen. With P emitter 2 still selected, hold in shift and press space and go to add a P turbulence tool to add variation in the direction that the big red glowing particles are flowing in. You do not need to modify the strength values for this particular turbulence tool. And for DaVinci Resolve processing purposes, like what we did with our fire spark particle effects, with P Turbulence 2 still selected, go to add a P Render tool. And finally, go to connect the P Render 2 node to the background yellow arrow of Merge 1, so that the floating fire spark particles always appear in front of the bottom red glow. Thank you very much for watching. I hope that video was useful to you. If you enjoyed the content and wish to be notified about future uploads on this channel, please like, share, and subscribe. Join me soon for another video. Take care.